begin. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome today to Lisa Bug Mind Body Blend. We're in the month of May 2023. Our theme is Building Better Balance. And this will be, of course, in the traditional sense of being able to balance on one foot or in bird dog, those kind of things, but also really focusing on building muscular balance. Because of our lifestyle the way it is, there are certain muscle groups that we dominantly use. And then there's muscle groups that we don't think about using. They tend to get a little bit weaker. So I have a lot of focus today on this lower part of our leg. So the calf is balanced with the um, anterior tibialis, this muscle right in front of the shin. Which one do you think gets overused? The calf and the tibialis gets underused because when we're walking, every time we take a step forward, we use that calf to push off and to propel us, which we need that strength. But if we have a weakened muscle on the front side, we can get something called foot drop, where as we pick up our foot, it doesn't lift up enough to take a step forward and we stub our toe on things and drag it. So we really need to focus on strengthening that tibialis anterior. So we're gonna spend some time doing that as well as other muscle groups. Also my theme of our movement pattern today is quick, quick, slow. So we're gonna use that tempo as we do a lot of our exercises today. We'll, be, we'll do two movements at a faster pace and one movement at a slower pace. So let's start with our Tai Chi and we're going to do grasp the peacock's tail. We haven't done that in a while. So let's start with our right foot firmly planted on the floor and tap the left toe, come into right ball. So we have the right hand on top, the left hand underneath. We'll preload, slightly moving to the right. And as we step out left diagonal, lead with your heel, and just take both hands and reach them across your body. Now your left hand will trace on top as we shift our body weight to the right. We're picking up the left heel. And then press hands. Volume is very low today. Thank you so much, Linda. Let me see if I can adjust that for us. I'm going to bring my... Does that sound a little bit better, Linda? I'm going to take my little microphone a little bit closer to... Let me just check to make sure I'm on the right speaker. Hang on. Um, yep, I've got my USB mic going. Okay, so thank you for the feedback on that. So I always want you to be able to hear really well. Okay, let's begin again. Thank you so much. Let's start, start in our right ball, left foot tapping, right hand on top. We'll preload to that right side. As we start to step out to the left, pick up your toes. Now that picking up your toes is working that shin muscle. Then as we shift our body weight back, pick up the left toes again, fire that shin muscle. Come into push hands, shifting your body weight. As we shift back, the left toes lift again. We press forward, shifting the body weight. Shift back one more time, pivoting on that left heel. And then we step into left ball. All right, I know there's a lot of movements, so we'll try it again on this side. A lot of shifting the body weight. We'll prep to the left, step out to the right, and both hands just trace across. Shifting, we're coming down the peacock's tail, pick up the right toes, come into push hands, shifting the body weight again. Draw back the fingers, picking up those right toes, firing your tibialis anterior. Press away, then the hands just kind of move to the front as we pivot that right foot forward and then step into right ball. All right, we gradually move forward on each of these steps. So I'm going to start back just a bit. We preload to the right. Step out with that left foot. Pull your toes up. Trace your hands across to the left. Shift your body weight. Pull up those left toes, come into push hands, pull back, toes come up, press forward into that double block, 
draw cross pivot on the heel step into left ball so i have my left hand always on top in left ball and i'm on my left foot preload to the left pick up that right heel as we step out on the diagonal bringing the arms gracefully across the front of us bring it down pulling up the toes push hands the wrists connect together draw back soften through your wrists press forward trace the hands across pivoting on the heel step into right ball let's do it twice more on each side preload step out strike the heel first slowly sweep it down pull up the left toes push hands any amount of bend in that knee that feels good for you draw back press away trace across with the hands pivoting on the heel step to the left into left ball rotate reloading step out get your balance there shift weight pull up the right toes push hands draw back toes come up press forward trace across pivot that foot step to the right into right ball one more each side preload step out you're bending your right knee a little bit before you step grasp the peacock's tail push hands draw back pull those toes up vigorously press it out trace across pivot on the heel turning the foot forward stepping into left ball last time preload stepping out take your time draw it down there's a little bit of hinge in your hips here press out draw back softening through your elbows and your wrists press forward trace across pivoting on the foot stepping into right ball let's close our form hands to shoulders brush away arms lower as we step the right foot in let's take a nice breath in sweep the arms up circle open and around just warming up through your shoulders a little bit nice generous range of motion but in a pain-free way one more time moving back and reverse down and around two more and last one inhale and exhale all right we're starting with our heavier workload for rows and deadlifts i'm going to give us a little bit of music just in the background so i can keep my tempo here let me know if that's overpowering because I want my voice to be heard the most. Okay, heavier weights. So our theme is quick, quick, slow. So I'd like you to start with your knees slightly bent. Bring the weights right to the front of your kneecaps. So we're in our bent over row position. We'll pull the right arm back, then the left, then come up and back down to your position. Now the left side first, quick, quick, and slow rise back down. Right side first, quick, quick, and slow and lower. Left side first. This is mind-body blend, so I'm challenging our brain 
with a lot of these exercises. Right side first. So I'm switching the lead arm we start with each time. Scoop your abs in quick, quick, and slow. Right side first, add a twist. Quick, quick, pull it up. This is your deadlift. Left side first, twist. Quick, quick, pull it up. Nice job. Right side first. Make sure your knees are bent when you're in your deadlift position and your spine is nice and long. There's no curving in your back. Neutral spine. Up. Down. Right side first. Twist. Pull it up. So there's a lot of elements with this. Stay really mindful. Left side. Look over your shoulder. Look over your shoulder. Pull it up. Let's do two more on each side. Right side first. Twist. Twist. Pull it up. Use those glutes and hamstrings. Left side first. Twist. Twist. Pull it up. One more on each side. Exhale. Exhale. Bring it in and down. Left side first. Last time, rotate. Rotate. Rise and hold it up here. Stay at the top. Good. Now bring your hands right to your shoulders. We're going to do a bicep curl reversing. Start with the right side, one on each side. So we go curl, curl, and now a squat. Down and up. Left side, curl, curl, and a squat. Down. Make sure your weight is correct for this. Right side, left, and a squat down. Good, left side first. I'm doing the hammer curl, but you can do any style of curl you want. You can add some rotation where you come down here, here, and squat. You can rotate the other way so you have that reverse bicep curl. Good. And squat. Right side first. Now, are you ready to add some balance, everybody? Say yes. All right. As you do your curls, raise up off your heel. Up. Up. And a squat. It's going to take a couple for you to get your awareness and your body distribution to keep your balance with this. Left side first, calf raise, calf raise, and down. Now we usually do this class barefoot, but you can always wear shoes for this. If you have some feet issues and it's better for you to have those shoes on, to help you balance and stabilize. How we doing? Right side first. Up. Up and a squat. Starting to feel those biceps a little bit. Left side. Up. Up and a squat. Let's do two more leading with each side. Right side first. Up and a squat. A lot going on with this combination. Left side. And a squat. Good job. We have one more each side. Notice how much your biceps are working when you have your hands at the top. So I don't have my hands all the way at my shoulders. So my biceps are working the entire time. And a squat. All right, relax the arms by your side. Now, I want you to pick a weight you can do an overhead press. And an overhead press is maybe not appropriate for everybody with heavy weight, 
but I still want you to push above your head, even if that means you're not gonna hold a hand weight because our arm needs to move there, right? So pick the weight that works for you. Come back to this position, pressing up right side first and left back into that squat. Left side first and squat. Now some ways we can modify lifting above the head. Right side, we can just come here and here. We don't have to go all the way above the head. But I want you to move the arm through some range of motion with or without workload. Right side, reach, reach and squat. So what do you think about this one, adding the calf raise? Well, we just have to try it, right? Right side first, lift the heels up. One, two, take that squat down. Left side first, up, up and down. Right side. Now you can always go back to that bicep curl at any time. If you do a few of these and you say, well, that's enough for me today, that's okay. There's that other exercise you can do. We have two more leading with each side first. So right, left, and a squat left side. Now I'm in a mid position squat. My feet aren't very far apart. My knees are tracking as best as I can over my feet. And squat. We have one more left side first. And a squat down. And up. Relax your arms down. Okay, let's pick a lot lighter workload. We've got some shoulder work here with this next one. Again, if it bothers your shoulder to lift your arm out and do this position, and you need to do it without weight or very lightly weighted or part way up, I want you to choose your range of motion. All right. So we're back into that squat position, mid stance. Shoulders are down and back, alternating right, left, side arm raise. One, squat with arms forward with a front raise. Left side first, one, two, and squat. Now, how many of you already said, oh, we could add balance here too? Yes, we can. You're starting to think like I do. So let's do left side first. And a squat. Let's add optional balance. Now another exercise for this sidearm raise is an upright row, right? So we can make it look like this. Up. Up. And then if it bothers your shoulders to bring your arms forward, just keep them down on the squat. So it'll look like this, just arms down. Left side first, so we have an upright row. No arms on the squat. Or a side raise. Any bend in the elbow. Arms forward on the squat. Lots of shoulders, left side first, lateral raise, lateral raise, front raise. Have you got the one that works for you? Yes, if your weights are a little lighter, you can go arms out straight for a long lever, or you can bend them any amount here. I did the wrong arm first. <laughs> Talking too much, right side first. Let's do two more on each side leading and down. 
I tell you what, I have to use music because music talks to me. I can hear the phrasing, so it makes me know which arm I'm on. Because otherwise, with all this chit chat, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Left side first. Now I lost count, so let's do one more each side leading just to be sure. How are you doing with the toe raises? We're working those calves, left side last time. And lower down. And come up. So I have fives right now, but I think I'm going to need to go lower for the next exercise. I want you to do a workload that you can do a tricep kickback, but you're holding the arm at the top and then you're coming up from that deadlift. So I'm going to go down to my threes. This is an interesting combination. So what I want you to do is just bring your weights by your side. It's almost like you're gluing them to your body. Soften your knees. And when you hinge into your deadlift, you're taking your arms with you. So notice I'm not moving my arms. So let's just do a couple of these. So you can feel as you hinge forward, then your arms are now working against gravity. All right, so let's take it down into that position and hold. So the exercise maintains this position. So knees are bent, abs in tight. You should be feeling work right now. So with this exercise, we're gonna do alternating tricep kickbacks then rise up out of that deadlift. So we go right arm first, left arm, rise up, trying to give you the best camera view. Switch sides. And up. So your upper arm never moves. It stays in the exact same place anchored to your body. Left side first. Rise up from your deadlift. Right side first. And no, I'm not going to lift my heels off the floor on this one. I think if I tried that, I would just take a little nose dive <laughs> right on the floor. So keep the feet firmly into the floor. Now, three pounds is plenty for me on this one. I also want to make sure you're not swinging the arm all the way forward on that kickback. So it's not all the way here, all the way here. That would be incorrect. We're keeping that movement fairly small. It's here and here. Come up and down. Left side. Wow, I'm feeling the back of my upper arm big time triceps working. Let's do two more each side leading. So the muscle balance work we're working on, so we did a lot of bicep curls a couple sets ago. So now we're balancing that out with the opposing muscle group of the tricep. Up, oh, wow. Let's make it one more each side, right side. Wow. And bring it up. I hope you're doing this and feeling it the way I'm intending this exercise to feel. Up and hold and take a couple shoulder rolls. rolls. Ooh, loosen up the necks. Okay, so we're going down onto our mat for some chest presses. So I want you to pick the workload. We're laying on your back. You can do a chest press and also a chest fly. So make sure it's the correct weight you can do both of those movements with. I'm going to go up to my eights for this pretty strong muscle group. So come on down onto your back. Get comfy because we're going to actually be down on the mat for a while. So if you need a little pillow behind your head, something under your knees, whatever you need to get comfortable here. So our weights are parallel. Make sure they're not up here by your face. So I want you to bring them down. 
below the center of your chest, we go right arm, left arm, then open out slow, fly. Now the left side first, left, right, and a fly. Right side. I'm keeping my elbow close into my body on these presses. Then I'm allowing the arms to open out. Left side. So if we want a little bit more core, as always, we can bring our knees to the tabletop. Right side, left side, fly. Left side first. Now, as always with Lisa Bug progressions, if I move on to the next progression and it's not working for you, then don't pick it. Stay with what you've got. Left side first. So I'm gonna add an opposing leg extension forward. Right arm first, left leg goes out. And open. Left arm, right leg. And open. Right arm, left leg. And open. Left arm, right leg. Now on the open, both legs can go long, right side. Open. Left side. That might be too much for you guys, so try not to do anything that's going to bother your lower back. Right side. And open. Left side first. And open, let's get two more rounds leading with each arm first, right side. And open. Left side. Open, working those pecs, right side. And open. Left side, last time. And open. And close, bring your feet down to the mat. Release your weights down as well. We're gonna give our arms a nice break by working through the core. So feet are flat on the floor. Support the back of your head, elbows out. We'll go right side, elbow to knee. Now the left, then straight up the middle, hold, reach your knees, come back down, left side, twist, twist, come up the middle, hold, reach the knees, right side twist, quick, quick, come up the middle, slow, reach the knees, and down, left side, quick, quick, Bring it up, reach those knees, right side. Now on the middle crunch, your option is to come up into a compound crunch, back down, left side. So if it feels okay, you're gonna lift the feet up off the floor and come down, right side first. Compound crunch or regular crunch. Left side first. Come up. Right side first. Two more on each side. Left side first. Relax your neck into your fingertips. Right side first, bring it up, 
Left side first, last time. Bring it up and relax. Rest your neck, hug your right knee into your chest, extend your left leg along. So we are gonna bring knees to table just like this. So I'm gonna take this right knee, bring it up to tabletop. So my foot is slightly higher than this knee. I'm going to lift the bottom leg slightly off the floor if that feels okay for you. If not, you're gonna keep it down. Both ankles go flex, 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 flex. So we're holding our core stable. I'm emphasizing the pulling of my toes up. So the bottom leg can be on the ground. You can bring this knee in closer to the chest if it feels better for your core. So I'm working this shin muscle. Flex, flex. If you want a little bit more for your abs, you're gonna curl your head and shoulders up like you're doing a Pilates curl up. Flex, flex. Now, by now, you should be saying, oh, Lisa, I know which muscle we're working here now. You should be feeling this starting to burn in the front of your shins. Flex, flex, flex. Whoa, we're almost at a minute of doing these. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, lower the head, lower the bottom leg, take the right knee in a little closer and twist your body over to the left. Couple breaths. So that was set one. We had to do it one more time on the other side. So I want to give you a nice rest here. All right, let's do a bridge in between. So set both feet down, about hips distance apart, come up into your bridge, lift lower halfway, lift lower halfway. Squeezing those glutes and hamstrings, this work is great for muscular balance of all those squats we did earlier in class. You can also take your weights and place them right on your hip creases to give you extra workload to lift up. It's always an option when we're doing bridging. And lift. Woo, I got a little gnat flying in my face. Up. Up. Just four more lifts, then we'll go back to those anterior tibialis movements. And come down. Left knee comes into your chest. Right leg goes long. This is our wind relieving pose. It's a great release for your lower back. Okay, let's set it up on this side. So this left knee comes to table. Right leg lifts off the mat if that feels okay. That's a lot of core work already. So that leg can stay down. And we're gonna take the feet and flex, flex. Our goal is one minute, but if you need to take a break and relax, then come back in. If you need to rest this foot to the mat and just work on one ankle, I'm good with that too. If you wanna curl up, Scoop your abdominals in, into that Pilates curl. Pull your toes, pull, pull. So we're not putting the emphasis on the point. We're pulling the emphasis on the flex. Pull it up, 20 seconds, guys. Up, up, ooh, yeah. I'm feeling this now. Almost there, 15 seconds. Up, up, eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, one. Lower down, hug that knee into your chest. Oh, how can a small movement be so tough? It's a small, weaker muscle group. We don't work it a lot. Okay, let's bring that knee across. Take our twist. Just relaxing your feet. Take some deep breaths. And then we'll come back into the center, hug that knee into the chest again. Okay, we're moving into back work. So from a prone position, we'll turn ourselves over all the way down onto our bellies. So take your hands, just lift them up off the floor, extend your spine nice and long, feel some work in your back, but keep your head neutral. I'm gonna try not to push myself up with my hands. So with the quick, quick, we'll lift the right and the left leg off the floor. So we go up, up. Now lift the upper back up slow and come down. Left side first. Quick, quick. Back rises up and down. Right side first. You can tense your fingers, barely touch them to the mat. And if you gently want to use them on the floor, that's okay. Left side. Lift, lift. Chest comes up. Right side first, lift, lift, bring it up. Left side first, bring it up. Take a short break. I'm going to give you an option for our contralateral raise. So now your arms are going to reach way out ahead of you if this feels okay on your shoulders. So when the right leg lifts, your left arm is going to come up in opposition. Then when your left leg lifts, your right arm will come up in opposition. That's your quick, quick. And then the slow is both hands and both legs come off the floor. And then we come down to relax. So let's get ready to start. Take a breath. Right side, then left. One. Two. Now both arms, both legs come down. Left leg first, right hand. Come up. Right leg first. Both limbs. Left leg first. Super challenging. Both limbs. You can do any part of this that works for your body. If the arms bother your shoulders, just go back to the legs. Let's do two more leading on each side. Right side first. Both limbs. Left side first. Both. Right side. And lift. Left side. And lift up and down very carefully push with your hands to come back into child's pose take a counter stretch for your back curve your tailbone under so you can lengthen your lumbar spine the other way So 
So next exercise, you can do this with heavy weight. It's from all fours. You've got your dumbbells right on the floor and your hands are going to pull up, up on the quick, quick. Then you'll do a tricep push up. So you're going to bend your elbows, bringing your chest down. Now notice how my elbows are going, pointing back to my body and coming up. So we go right, left, tricep, and up, left, right. Tricep push up. So that was our base level. If you want to go a little harder, you're going to take your weights forward a little bit and walk your knees back. So now you're in a kneeling plank. We go right arm, left arm, and your tricep push up, down, and up. So choose the one that you like best. I'm going to come back into basic version. Ready? And begin. Right side first. Pull it up. Right Left, your choice of a push-up, you can make it small. Left side first, back, back, and a push-up. Now, if the push-up doesn't work for you at all, then do a little child's pose and go back and come forward. Or you can just keep pulling one arm at a time. I want you to do any method of this that works good for your body. I know those push-ups are hard. Let's do two more each side leading. Right, left. You can also take your hands off to the, do the push-up. Left side first. And your push-up. I'm inventing modifications as I go. Right side first. Push up. Left side first. And your push up. Let's do one more each side leading just for good measure. Right side. And your push up. Left side first, last time. And your push up. And set those weights right off to your side. Lengthen out into a nice child's pose. Release your lats, your triceps a little bit, your chest muscles. Okay, next exercise. Same rhythm pattern. Basic level. Come from hands and knees. We're going to do a bird dog, quick, quick on each side, then back to a child's pose. So bird log will go up, up, back to child's pose, then lead on the other side. Bird dog, child's pose. I'll do this one more each side for this demo. Left side first, bird dog, bird dog, and child pose. All right, that might be the one you stick with because we go from zero to 60 pretty quick. So next level, you're up into a high plank. The right leg will lift. The left leg, you'll push up into down dog. So big change, right? Now left side first. Down dog. So pick the one you start, right side first. Down dog or child's pose. Left side first. Brace your core. Down dog or child's pose. Two more each side. Whew. 
Left side first. Bird dog is great. If you have shoulder or wrist issues, maybe the plank isn't the best. Right side first. That's okay, there's always another way to work. Left side first, last one. Leg, leg, down dog or child's pose. Just hold whichever of those two positions you'd like. Breathe. And then we'll drop the knees down to the mat. Relax your hands behind you in your child's pose to give your wrists a break and your shoulders a break. Take a few breaths. And then coming up to a comfortable seat. If you need to sit up on a blanket to make this uh, seated position feel more doable, we talked about that a couple weeks ago on how much easier it is to sit up on a blanket. So I'm just gonna do it for demonstration because I want you to see, I'm gonna fold it a couple times, sit up on that blanket. You can even sit in a chair, take your legs out a comfortable width. So I need you to be able to sit upright. If you're sitting slouched like this, not good. So. Bend your knees if you need, roll some towels under them, get your pelvis neutral, sit up, bring your arms out. So we've got a twist, right, left, right and reach. Come up, left side, left, right and reach. It's the quick, quick, slow tempo. So it's twist, Quick, <clears throat> quick, slow, reach, and come up. Again, quick, quick, and slow. Do your arms need to be out? No, they don't. You can keep them in if it bothers your shoulders and fold over. Two twists, quick, quick, and stretch. So we're working oblique training, lower back work, and then adding a stretch. Quick, quick, down and stretch. Two more each side leading. Rotate, rotate, and fold, reach. Good, so these are not long held stretches. They're very dynamic. Down, up, two twists. And down. Last time, lead left, twist, twist, and stretch and come up. Now see if you need to make an adjustment with your leg position. You might like to go a little wider. If now you feel like you have some comfort and some ability to open up the hips a little bit more. So hands are gonna go to your shoulders. We'll take two side bends starting with the right. So it's right, left, now stretch to the center. Left side first. Quick, quick, in the middle, slow. Right side. Left. Now if your shoulders feel pretty good when you do this, reach the top arm, quick quick and come center. Left side, quick. Your hands can also come behind you as you push forward. And 
I'm still here. I think sometimes there are times quiet is needed because I talk a lot when I'm teaching. So let's do a few more just in your own body. One more leading each side. Now hold the stretch to the front. We are going to stretch the top of the foot. And I want you to get in a position where you're going to be able to work with your foot with your hands. So maybe sitting on the floor is not going to be that comfortable for you. You might have to jump up into a chair. So we can maybe start in a cross leg pose or any position that feels comfortable for you on the floor. You can even have one leg straight. We're going to work on our right foot. So see if you can just pick it up here. And what we're going to do is extend the stretch into this toe point. So this is going to lengthen out the tibialis anterior and the top of the arch of your foot. So I'm going to look at my clock here, and I want you to stretch this area of your foot for one minute. Now, another way you can do this is stand up, take the top of that foot and put it on the floor and put some pressure down into the top of the arch of your foot. If you need the wall for balance on this one, I'll give you a pass for using the wall. So let's keep stretching it. So this area of our foot, it's super tight. Back in the day, I used to be able to do a really nice toe point, and that part of my foot has just gotten so tight over the years. Well, because I haven't been doing that a lot. So when we don't do it, we lose our range of motion. 15 seconds holding your foot stretch. One more breath. Ah, exhale. All right, let's release that foot. You can move it around a little bit. And then let's work on the other side. So if you're standing up, you're going to turn the top of your foot, your shoelace area down to the floor. You can bring this leg in and we're pushing the top of the arch. So we're curling our foot into a toe point. Now try not to get really cranky on your, your ankle here. No cranking on the ankle. We're just gently pressing the top of the foot. And you can hold it really sta stable or you can release the tension and then press it again. Just being aware of your own flexibility, differences between your right and left side. No judgment. No competition. Just mindful, mindful stretching. And we're breathing. Fifteen seconds. One more breath, and then release that. Maybe move that ankle around a little bit. Last stretching series is a dynamic forward bend. So let's come up to our standing position. 
If you need some support to put your hands on for that forward bend, please feel free to do that. So standing tall, we'll inhale, circle sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, soften the knees, flat back, swan dive down to your level of flexibility. Remain there for one breath. Then come back up. Lower back down. Remain there for two breaths. Come up. Back down. You would be correct if you said three breaths. Yes, 